everyone. Originally, uh, I was going to do this as one long lesson, one video, but it turned out that video lasted almost a half hour. So I've split it up into smaller videos. It's really important that you watch the videos in order because you need the things from the early videos to be able to play the things that are later in the videos. The videos just go in order through the things that are in page four. Good luck. Hey everyone, Mr. Anderson here. So this is lesson number one with our instruments. Before you do this lesson, it's really important that first you have watched the other videos that uh, I have for this week that show you the fingerings for your instrument. Uh, this lesson is for everybody, but I'm not gonna show you the, in the fingerings for your instrument. You have to know what the fingerings are and the way you're gonna learn it is by watching that video and also by looking at the Our First Note page, Our First Notes page, which is linked in this assignment. It's also in your virtual music folder that I talked about in the last lesson. The music that I'm going to show you on the page today is the trumpet book. I can't show everyone's book at once. You need to realize that different instruments play different notes. So you might see that uh, the trumpets play a G, an F, and an E on this page. But your instrument might play an F, an E flat, or a D. And even if you have the same letters as another instrument, sometimes your notes might be on the staff in a different line or space because of something called clefs, which they're not teaching us in the book yet, but I've talked about clefs before in the video that I shared with you about learning the note names. All right, now um, let's start with line number one, the first note. You guys have been practicing making that first sound for about a week. Now I've got to practice making particular notes. I hope you tried making those sounds while you were playing along with the last video as well, the, the one with the Our First Notes page. The first note for, uh, for the trumpets and for the clarinets is called G. For the uh, tuba, trombone, and flutes, it's called F. For all of us, it's gonna sound the same. It's going to sound like this. Or if you play trombone or tuba, but they're all going to sound like what we call a concert F. If I play it on the trumpet, it sounds like this. So what I want you to practice doing right now is taking a breath for four counts and then playing that sound for as long as I ask you to hold it until I ask you to stop and then we'll stop together. We're going to breathe in again and we're going to play another long sound. Now there are times when I'm going to ask you to play a sound that lasts a specific number of beats. Right now I'm just asking you to take a breath and hold a note that lasts a long time and you'll know by watching my hand when it's time to start or stop. As you're playing compare yourself to the sound my trumpet is making and ask yourself, does it match? Is it the same thing? Here we go. One, two, three, and. Breathe in, two, three. Breathe in. One more time, breathe in. All right, now for a first go there, I just had you play it for a while. We kept repeating it over and over again. And our books in line one, they only show two notes, right? Note and they have the word rest, and then another long note, and the word rest. I was having you play that again and again and again. It's repetition that's going to make us uh, better at this. If your sound didn't sound right the first time you played the note, you had many chances to get it right. Now I'm going to ask you to do it again. Uh, it's important that when you breathe, your inhalation is relaxed, and you let your body expand out and down. You don't want your shoulders to get tense. You want to be able to contain as much air as you can, so you have the fuel to hold that note for a long time. Try it again, make sure it's a relaxed breath in and that you can hold that note for as long as I can. Here we go, line one again, and we're just gonna keep on repeating the line, note, rest, note, rest, note, rest. Here we go. Breathe in. Breathe in. 
Stop, breathe in. And. Breathe in. Breathe in. And stop. Good. Now, if the note that you're playing matches the sound I'm making, you're in good shape. And for the, the clarinets, if you're pushing down the right fingering, which for you is no fingers at all, you're probably going to be playing the right note no matter what, unless you're accidentally blowing too hard and getting a really high squeak. If you're playing uh, flute, trumpet, trombone, or tuba, it's possible you're accidentally playing too low. So on trumpet, trombone, and tuba, speed the air up, small opening in your lips, listen and make sure that you're playing the same sound that I am on my instrument. Uh, if you play the flute, sometimes you'll get a low F instead of a high F, and to get the high F to pop out, push your chin out a little bit and aim that air a little bit higher, like up at the tip of your nose, and a high sound will come out instead of the low sound. Let's look at line two. Now line two uses the same note. For the trumpets here, it's a G. Uh, if for other instruments, it might be an F. It's the, I know it's the same note as above because look, this G is on the second line of the staff, and this G is also on the second line of the staff. It might be on a different line or space for your instrument, and it might be a different letter. But you'll notice that no matter what instrument you play, line one and line two have the same, um, the same note. Uh, now, on this one, it's not just a long sound. We have notes that last, last specifically one beat. These are called quarter notes. So we're going to keep a steady pulse, and we're going to have to play four sounds, one on each beat, and then four beats of rest. The whole time you're playing, you want to make sure you're tapping your foot. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down, up, 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 down, up. Your foot is always tapping to that steady beat and you're going to play a sound each time your foot hits the ground. Ta, 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 wait, 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 wait. Ta, 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 wait, wait wait, wait, and we can keep repeating that one over and over again as well. Now you notice that just now I used the sound ta when I was demonstrating it. When you play on your instrument, unless you play the drums, you want every sound you make to start with a t, with a t sound. Your tongue touches the top of your mouth just like when you're saying, it is time for turkeys who wear tutus to eat tacos on Tuesday. Any word that starts with the letter t is Without, it, without an H after it. Any word that starts with that T sound is a good bet here for the way you should form your, your tongue when you're playing these notes. Um, if you play the clarinet, you want to make sure that your tongue is touching the tip of the reed for each sound. Ta, 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 ta. For this one, I'm going to play the piano. I want you to play four notes and then rest, four notes and then rest, and your foot is tapping all the time. It's tapping when you're playing, it's tapping when you're resting. There's the note. It's our F or it's our G, depending on the instrument. Ready, here we go. And oh, one, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 rest. Two, three, four. Ta, 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 ta. 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 Rest. Two, three, four. Ta, 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 and stop right there. The important thing we need to make sure we're practicing is that we're tapping our foot while we play and we're using our tongue to start each note. If you aren't using your tongue, you probably sound like you're an owl saying who, 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 and the beginnings of your notes are sounding uh, 
vague and hard to decipher. Make sure that you're feeling that your foot hit the ground, you're feeling your tongue touch the roof, roof of your mouth. If we were in an actual class right now, I'd have you play line two again. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is rewind and listen to line two again, play along with line two again, making sure that it's better this time than the time before, that you're feeling the steady beat with the piano and with your foot and you're using your tongue to start each of the notes.